Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. I had several requests in the comments on my look at this weird little antenna to tear it down. People want to know what it's made of. So do I. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to find out what the antenna itself is made of. And then, this is the tricky part, we're going to take this uh, base apart and we're going to see what's going on inside of here. This will be tricky to take apart, but I have a plan. Let's start with the radiator. Got a razor knife. First thing I'm going to do is try to cut this cap off and see what's going on under here. <laughs> Yep, they glued it. I figured that was glued. <sighs> they glued it pretty well. Okay, bye cap. Well, I can't really... Okay, there's two layers of heat shrink. So let's... Uh... Peel away the heat shrink. See, there's one layer, there's another layer underneath. Oh, it's getting sharp. I can feel the edges. Okay, I'll get rid of that. Get rid of that. Now we'll cut through the final layer here. Oh, actually, we got some of it there. Yeah, cut the rest of this. I don't want to cut my hands up on this probably sharp edged steel. All right. Oh, those aren't pop rivets. They're actually screws and nuts. And these, I well, still got some bluing on them. It's just a couple of strips of tape measure type. Let's uh, just come in a little bit. All right, there we go. All right, so. <laughs> Two pieces of steel. Feels a little tiny bit heavier gauge than what you would find in the tape measure. And we have two screws and nuts holding them to the bolt. So, no big surprise there. I kind of wondered if I was going to find old uh, actual tape measure <laughs> pieces. But yeah, that's what's in there. Okay, now, this thing. I gotta quit banging things around. That's gonna be a lot of fun editing the audio. How am I gonna open this thing up? It looks like the plastic was poured either into this or this was a formed piece that they pressed an assembly into. But I'm gonna have to try to carefully cut through this. And to do that, I have a rotary tool. Some might call it a Dremel. I don't know where I got this. Um, it was in my tool cabinet. And we got cutting discs. Oh, there we go. That's a good cutting disc. We'll use that. All right. Let me get this. Uh, let me get this set up and get some gloves, and uh, we'll cut this thing open and see. What's going on in here? Remember uh, when I measured it with the multimeter? I was seeing continuity from the shield on the SMA connector. 
to the antenna and nothing on the center pin. Let me get my rotary tool set up and uh, we'll cut this open. Okay, not exactly work gloves, but I just want some protection on my hand. Where's the speed control? Ah. All right. Okay, I'm thinking they potted the whole thing. This is going to take me a little while. I'll turn the camera back on when I'm finished so I can focus on what I'm doing instead of thinking about the camera frame. And uh, we'll see what's inside. Okay, here it is. I cut it open. Okay, all right. So what was inside? This is what was inside. There actually is a coil and a capacitor. This is 10 turns on an eight millimeter diameter plastic form. Uh, the coil starts at the shield. Uh, several groups of turns are shorted and we have a 12 picofarad capacitor that comes up and taps into the coil. Here's the schematic. Um, yes, this is odd. I, I, I would wager that they, since they have the antenna in varying lengths that they ship it with, they probably make these coils and they just use solder because that's, those are tapped with just plain old solder. They just soldered between two of the turns. Wait a minute. One, oh, there's one at uh, two and a half, two and a half to three. I missed one. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, two and a half, one, so that would be two and a half to three. Which, on the other side of this, they tap, or they solder one, two, and three together. No, that's the antenna side, sorry. Meh, looking at it wrong, okay. On the other side of this, one from two, three, and four are joined together here. And if we turn it over, at uh, two and a half to three are joined together. So two and a half to three and a half are joined here but two, three, four are joined on the uh, same side as where the winding starts. That doesn't make sense. I mean, this is basically from two and a half all the way up to one, two, three, four is a big shorted block. So we got one turn, a big shorted area, two, three, four turns, and the capacitor is tapped in. It's a 12 picofarad capacitor from the center pin of the SMA. It's tapped here, and then we have one more turn, and then the last three are shorted before we get to the antenna. So yeah, okay. It's, it's a matching network. This is why I didn't read any continuity from the center pin, because it goes right to a 12 picofarad capacitor. Picofarad, picofarad, tomato, tomato, potato, potato. Um, and comes up here and it taps what, at what is essentially one, two, three, four turns up the coil. And then there's one turn above the capacitor before we get to the antenna. I would have thought this would have performed better than it did. because the RF should be coming right through this capacitor and just have one turn to the antenna. And yet, it did not perform very well. Um, 
just, uh, just I, I, I didn't film it, but when I was doing the distance test, I put the uh, rubber duct that came with my 705 on the uh, bow fang. And I got all the way to the edge of the property, it was still full quieting, you know. So a decent quality rubber duck vastly outperformed the bow fang. This uh, tactical antenna barely out, barely, I mean just barely outperformed the bow fang stock rubber duck. So, yeah. anyway, you guys wanted to tear down. There you go, I tore it down. Okay, editing Kevin here. I cleaned up the, uh, the hand-drawn schematic, simplified it. This is basically the circuit inside the base. So pause the video here if you want to have a closer look at it, copy it out, print screen it. Um, somebody else can do the reverse engineering if they want to figure out how this works RF-wise. It's an odd arrangement in my mind. There you go. I'll provide that in case you guys want to do a little bit more uh, engineering and reverse engineering on it. Okay, back to the video clip. <sighs> this uh, might be a useful part. You know, I'm going to throw this in the parts box because I might, uh, I might find a way to use this. Maybe even wind a different coil on here for a different application. I mean, it's, a, it's an SMA connector that'll go on the HT. It's a threaded end that I could put just about anything on. So I could put whatever kind of coil I needed in there. Yeah, this is going to go in the parts bin. So for seven bucks, I got what, what's some fairly useful hardware. The uh, actual metal radiator thing here, though, uh, it's going in the trash. I don't know, I'll take these screws out and I'll keep this part because this will go, go with this. And that'll be useful for whatever experiments I might want to do down the road. So there you go. That's what's inside the uh, Abri tactical antenna. I hope you found that useful, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.